Aloha everyone, this is June 6th and 7th from the 2018 Kilauea eruption. Let's get into it. We begin June 6th back at Kapoho. Overnight, the lava flow that was making ocean entry in the once coastal community has continued to expand in the north, south, as well as further out to sea. The exact point where the plume is coming from and the main ocean entry is occurring has some volatility to it. It'll fluctuate uh, to the north, to the south, and this happens each day we'll wake up and the ocean entry will be in a slightly different location. Right now it's progressing further to the south and we see some of the last remnants of the wild pie tide pools. The once amazing ecosystem of amazing marine life has been now enveloped in lava and the last little bits to the south are falling here. Here we are back on the boat with the Kaikamarzo looking at the ocean entry point and the plume coming up off of it. The thing to look at here is the discoloration of the ocean and the steam coming up off of it. One of the things that the USGS is talking about at this point is the idea that the lava from Fisher 8 that is making ocean entry has so much volume that it is descending all the way to the sea floor. Now this is slightly different from some of the ocean entry points in the Pu'o'o days where they were low volume at the ocean entry themselves and they create these benches or lava deltas that were more unstable than this type of lava flow that we're seeing here. It's also worth noting that there, where the lava is making entry here is very shallow considering the steep drop-offs that the Big Island of Hawaii has just offshore. But it's not happening right here. This is going to be some of the more stable stuff that we're going to see in 2018. But the lava delta itself is going to continue to expand and it's going to get absolutely humongous. Back up slope at the eruptive vent of Fisher 8, there hasn't really been that many changes. The eruption continues pretty consistently at an extremely high output, feeding the lava channel out of Leilani Estates running down slope seven miles into the Bay of Kapoho. The only fluctuation that has been observed at the eruptive vent is some deviations in the height of the fountains. They're ranging from about 180 to 230 feet. But when it gets at that high output and high fountaining, we start to see the lava flows, small lava flows running down the outside edge of the spatter cone down the slope and pooling or either making their way back to the lava channel. And these are going to become more and more rare as the cone continues to grow. There is some thing that needs to be said about the eruptive activity and how we went from new fishers opening every day or every other day, especially in the second phase of the eruption, to now how stable phase three is. Here we have another thermal map from the USGS on June 6th. And the main thing that this shows is everything's still active except for the breakout or overflow that we've seen wrapping around the Kapoho crater over the previous days, that looks to have cooled by this point. Back up at the Kilauea caldera, magma from within the shallow reservoir is continuing to drain downslope to feed the lower reef rift eruption. And as it's doing so, the caldera is still deflating and it's on these 24 hour collapse events that are happening on these regular intervals. The pattern is essentially that the collapse will happen. Earthquake activity will diminish significantly around the summit for say the next 12 to 16 hours. And then we'll start to see an uptick in earthquake activity. And then right in the hours preceding the expected time of the next collapse event, earthquakes will start to increase in frequency and in magnitude, getting a bunch of twos and threes around the caldera. And then boom, collapse happens, magnitude 5.3, and we do it again. And this is happening every day, every 24 hours. Here we have a progression of the deflation at the Kilauea summit provided by the USGS, and then a 3D model of what the caldera looks like at this point in the eruption. Transitioning into the morning of June 7th, we see that the ocean entry in the Bay of Kapoho 
has started to shift even further to the south. The main plume is now right at the wild pie tide pools and continuing to push further to the south. But to the north, there's also a expansion of the flanks that is claiming more homes and wiping out the last remnants of the Kapoho beach lots. There's gonna be a couple of homes that survive this day, but it's a really rough one as yet another community is just removed from the map. The footage we have here is of the final homes in the Kapoho beach lots being consumed as lava encroaches further and further into that subdivision. The footage we can tell is from the official sources, such as the County of Hawaii, because the helicopter is so low, it's under the 3,000 foot temporary flight restriction, which is the minimum altitude that anybody that isn't working under official capacity has to maintain. And it shows a house of note, this blue three-story home, which looks relatively new. I don't even think construction has been finished on it as there's still a porta potty out in the yard. But it's going to become of note as it's the last home in the beach lots to fall. And it's not going to fall on June 7th. It's going to take a little while longer. And it's going to be the symbol that people see from the air and from the ocean. Kind of that canary in the mine to see if the lava is working even further to the north. And going to start trying to push up into the farm lots which are at a slightly higher elevation than the beach lots. Back up at Fisher 8, we see that the spatter from the vent is coming over the top of the spatter cone, but this time on the east side of the cone itself. But I want to take this moment to speak about all the evacuees that have had to flee from Kapoho, Leilani Estates, Lanipuna, and all the other areas that have been impacted directly by the lava flows. Many of them have been taken in by other residents that are staying with friends or family but there's a significant amount that do not have places to go. And there is a Red Cross evacuation shelter that is open, but the issue with it is that they don't allow animals inside, so no pets. And also, if you're going to stay inside and you have evacuated, you have everything that you were able to get out of your house in the back of your truck or in a trailer. The issue of thieves is highly concerning. So many people are choosing not to stay in the shelters. They are staying with their belongings and camping out at the school, at the high school in Pahoa. Uh, the issue with that is that we have a ton of rain and that rain is going to make life miserable for many of the evacuees. Hey, I don't know if you can hear me. This is the Pahoa rain tonight. Um, this is what we're faced with. You can see tents in the background. Um, yeah, Hawaii needs help now because uh, Pelly's not stopping and neither is the rain today. This is May. No, nope. can't keep it out of rain. This is June what? June 7th. June 7th. This is day 34. Yeah. That'll do it for June 6th and 7th from the 2018 Kilauea eruption. We saw in this episode as the lava continued to expand into the Bay of Kapoho, the collapse explosions on a regular interval at the summit of Kilauea and a little bit about some of the hardships that lava evacuees are facing. Until the next one, aloha.